leo tuna survival kweli leo tuko na survival kweli leo leo ah hii leo ni kama video ni kama movie vipi habari asubuhi my brother Poa sana ndugu yangu. Uko fit eh? Ah, Alikuwa poa kabisa. Labda kwa haraka haraka kwa majina unakuita nani? Ah, jina langu ni Solomon Gitao. Eh? Ah, mimi mimi ni vitu mingi. Eh? Yeah. Ah, I'm a speaker, I'm a writer, I'm an ex I'm an ex homeless alcoholic. Eh? Yeah. And I'm also a person who rehabilitates. Ndio. The same same alcoholics. Anasema kwamba yeye ni mo, ni ni speaker. Mm-hmm. Yaani kumleta katika masuala kuongea, anajua okay. kuongea. At the same time pia yeye ni mwandishi yani katika uh, hapo ndo tutajua je uandishi wake ni uandishi wa nini? Mm. Na baada at the same time pia yeye ame alikuwa ni ni mtu ule ambao ni ni mlevi tuseme mm. na ulevi ulikuwa umeathiri sana maisha yake lakini ali reform kwa hivi sasa kutoka katika ulevi na kwa hivi sasa basi anasaidia wale watu ambao wameathirika na ulevi kutoka katika ulevi. Labda kwa haraka haraka introduction yako kuzaliwa wapi mtaani wapi kusoma na kadhalika vitu kama hivyo. Ya mimi I'm pretty old 56 years old now. Ndio. Uh, early childhood ilikuwa mimi siwezi kusema kulikuwa na shida mimi nimelelewa Westlands first schools in Consolata primary. I had a pretty good uh, upbringing eh. Ah uh, na maisha yalikuwa yanaendelea vizuri lakini mimi I started drinking at the age of 13. It's a long story but by the age of 31 hiyo hiyo pombe ikaniweka ika katika mabarabarani. Nikawa sina nyumba, ulevi melibomolea kila kitu na nikawa sasa naishi e, mabarabarani wale jamaa ambao society derogatively calls chokorazi nikaja kuwa mmoja wao. Kwa hivyo ni mtu umezaliwa tu katika familia ambayo inajiweza tu Mimi katika mita ya kati kule West. Yeah, yes. Ushona maana ukisikia West ni mita ya kati ni watu ambao wanajiweza fedha iko kila kitu kiko sawa sawa. Nini kilikufanya ukaingilia katika ulevi ya 13 years old? Uh, shida ni mingi kila mtu ana uh, uh, nini zake zile zinamfanya ingie katika katika ulevi. So zako ni gani? Tuseme sema for example mimi tu ni ile uh, pia pressure kwanza tulianza tukiwa ni experiment. Mm-hmm. Uh, ile tu kutaka kujijulia. Mm-hmm. Uh, ile tulianza pombe tukiwa na miaka 13. Mm-hmm. Lakini kaja kuwa ni kama inajaza pengo katika maisha yangu. Mm-hmm. Ikaja kuwa ni kitu napata suluhu ndani yake. Ikaja kuwa ni kitu nikita nikitamani kufanya kitu Nahitaji pombe ndio iniweke katika ile mood ya kufanya hiyo hiyo kitu. Hivi huko shule became a problem solver for me. Hivi throughout school nilikunywa. Okay. And even I came once I finished school sini nenda yakunywa. Na by the way I was just a functioning alcoholic. Na ndio napendaka kuongelesha vijana wanaume. Hii pombe unaona umeanza kutegemea hivi it can drop you down. Na haiheshimu mtu. Hai heshimu wewe umetoka wapi babako mamako walikuwa nani pombe inaweza kakuadhiri vibaya na ndio mimi natumia story yangu kuonyesha mimi wewe na nimekwambia mimi ni speaker mimi eh, naendaka kuongea katika shule za vijana I've covered many national schools nikiwaongelesha kuhusu story yangu nakwambia mimi ni mwandishi niko na kitabu chokora my life is an addict alafu niko na center pale nafanya rehabilitation Eh uh, wale wanaume wameadhiriwa ka, na pombe kabisa because wanaume tuko pabaya. Hebu ukaangalia the rate of alcoholism in this country how high is it? Ndio nataka mkenya kuelewe mm. na apate kujua vile alcohol ni vibaya. Yes. Kwa kumchukua kwa kumchukua pole pole katika story yako mm. ya unywaji kileo paka mm. ika mess maisha yako kabisa. Yeah. Umeniambia kwamba ulianza ukiwa na miaka 13. Yes. Wakati bado uko shule ukaniambia kwamba bado uko shule. Yes. Kwa hivyo ni kumaanisha kwamba wewe ulikuwa ni mbugiaji wa kileo hata ukiwa shule. Manake ya 13 ni kumaanisha kwamba bado uko primary. Yeah. Si ndio? Mm. Ifu walimu walikuwa wajui kwamba ni mlevi ama ni kitu. Hapana, wajua sasa tulianza pale. Mm-hmm. Nilianza tulipokuwa tunamaliza standard 7 yetu. Mm-hmm. Hapo ndio tulienda Nairobi showground ile katika kuwa kikundi ya vijana. Sasa tunajua next year mnaenda form 1, mmeanza kujihisi mnakuwa wanaume nini. Sasa tuka just a bet, you know what? Stukunywe kitu. Mhm. Moja tukazama tukunywe kitu. Na kwa kweli 
tuka tulikuwa na wadogo sana tuwezi enda pale kwa kaunta kujichukulia pombe so neno nachukulia ndugu moja wa marafiki zetu hapo akaenda akatunulia mm-hmm. sasa mshale walitoa ka credit ka moja tule tu task export pale mmeletoa mm-hmm. packet ya fegi hapa ah vijana si ni mburudike mm-hmm. lakini ujue mimi naweza kukuambia kitu moja kama ningejaribu pombe sisi wote hatukuwa tumai kunywa pombe leni kama ningejaribu pombe peke yangu singewahi kunywa maishani baada hapo maana hata pombe ya kwanza it was so bitter i wanted to speak it so menda pale show ground hiyo yes. menda mshamaliza standard 7 yeah. uli proceed kwenda secondary labda yeah, nilienda secondary nilienda okay. secondary maisha ilikuwa namna gani secondary maisha sasa nikiingia secondary <laughs> mimi nimekombea nime jamaa nime toka mahali ambapo hatu tulikuwa na uwezo so bado so mlikuwa mnaendelea na kileo secondary yeah, so pesa ziko mnaendelea mm-hmm. na kileo tena sasa kuwa sana sana una befriend watu older than you eh mimi marafiki zangu wako wa form 1 nikiwa form 1 marafiki zangu wako wa form 1 mm-hmm. ah hapana unafanya marafiki na watu wamemaliza hata wengine walikuwa wanafanya job okay eh, wengine ni form 4 form 3 na huko ne... sasa wali wasee wako na access ya alcohol na hivi tuseme ulikuwa ni mwanafunzi wa aina gani shuleni kima somo ulikuwa ni mwanafunzi wa aina gani somo Mungu amenibariki mimi basically i get by I was, a, I was an okay student uh, without much study somehow mm-hmm. lakini you see alcohol pombe kwangu nilipoikunywa na hii ni nataka kuwekelea makutilia makini sana maana kana najua vijana wengi ufikiria there's a solution in this alcohol mimi nilipoikunywa mara ya kwanza si ati nilipenda vile pombe inaonja ama nini lakini there is that feeling that came over me there was an emptiness inside okay na hii pombe ilikaa kama ndio ilileta suluhu katika maisha yangu let me just refresh that when i first took alcohol when the effect came the feeling of invincibility that feeling of self love that feeling of heightened self esteem ile kujihisi kwa kwamba unaweza pendeka na unajipenda hata we mwenye was a feeling that was empty from my life before Why? na sasa ikawa <laughs> na sasa ikawa that is the feeling i would chase until it landed me in the street maybe kulikuwa na shida kwa familia paka hey, ukaona kwamba unataka up, solution bro, uh, solution up, yako kwa kuona kwamba ni alcohol What was the problem? Manake no, po- just series, you know, misconceptions. You are young. Mm-hmm. You may not feel uh, lovely enough. You may it was such a long story. Mm-hmm. Uh, kuhusu uh, vile nimelelewa na nini eh? Okay. That uh, you feel empty. You are not you don't feel adequate. You don't have high self esteem. Mm-hmm. You may live in a in a very posh area. You may go to very posh schools. Lakini inside you as a human being, you may have low self esteem. Unakuta kwamba una feel kwamba maybe baba mama wakupendi nyumbani kule eh, upendi kwa kwamba hayo ma, hayo mafikiria zote so wewe ulikuwa ukiona kwamba kwa sababu haupendwi ukiona kwamba lazima utafute no, mpenzi no, mwingine ambao mpenzi ulimpata kakuwa ni kileo mpenzi akawa ni kileo mm-hmm. na kileo ikaonekana kwa kwamba hii ni suluhisho so secondary life yako bado pia ulikuwa unapiga tu kileo secondary life bado unapiga na maybe secondary haukuwa na shida na walimu hawakujua na mashida mingi mimi secondary by the way I was even kicked out of school mimi kwanza form 2 nilikuwa uh, in form 2 uh, by then I had gone to upper hill in form 2 nili, nili, nili I was expelled mm-hmm. and for two times that was when I siku a siku i attend school so kapata shule nyingine ama baadaye mm-hmm. sasa wazazi unajua wazazi wa kitambo mm-hmm. walikuwa wanasemaga aka ka shetani ka Nairobi akaezi maliziwa huko Nairobi peleka mtu reserve mm-hmm. mimi nilipeleka kwa kama sabit mm-hmm. mbuka hizo ni siku za mashifta na nini mm-hmm. kufika masabi tunaangalia kule umepelekwa nasema <laughs> bana this no is like those things from a like bad western movie yeah, those kind of towns eh nasema <laughs> bana this is just a one stop drinking place <laughs> and nikawa mlevi huko suffice to say this okay. by the time nitoka masabit nilikuwa mlevi mm-hmm. Nili, i was dependent on alcohol okay. by the time i was 18 i was fully dependent on alcohol lakini sasa ukumbuke kule nimeenda huku Nairobi nilikuwa nakunywa pombe so ulibanije kumaliza shule when nikienda kule unapata mira unapata tuchangatwa huko kwa manyata za waborana na nini sasa unakuwa an all round 
Uliweza kumaliza yeah. shule? Nilimaliza shule. Mm-hmm. Na mimi nikaja na I went uh, did some uh, did some training ya clearing and forwarding. Nikaja hapa airport nganza uh, I interned. Went into clearing and forwarding and soon I was making money. You see me I had one plan. Mimi mpango wangu as a young man haikuwa haikuwa kubwa. Make money, drink, drink. Make more money, have a good time. Make more money at infinity makukwa story. Mingi. Akukwa. Huko na agenda. Na by the way, mimi ningekaa hivyo as a functioning alcoholic all my life because I was doing okay. Okay. Lakini palifika mahali and this is the point I want to I want to emphasize. It reached a turning point where I moved from a functional alcoholic to a dysfunctional alcoholic. A functional alcoholic my definition is ni mtu anakunywa hata unaweza kunywa mpaka saa 11 asubuhi uende uoge na uende kazini. Mm-hmm. Na urudi kwa kubugia jioni. Okay. Hakuna it does not interfere with your home life na vitu kama hizo. I was that but a turning point ilifika nikakuwa dysfunctional. Yaani sasa haufanyi chochote wewe tu ni kubugia peke yake. Ni kubugia wakati ukifanya kazi hapo tunaishi wapi? Maybe unaishi peke yako ama bado uko kwenu Westlands? Na hapa hapana, sio <laughs> kitambo. Sasa Westlands ni kwa mtoto. Okay. Westlands so unaishi wapi wakati? Hapa tukaenda golf course, baadaye tukaenda na huko Ngong, nini la mean katoka kwa wazazi. Uh, I grew up, I mean. Sasa wakati hiyo nilikuwa naishi na hapa karibu Maybe sasa. uko na family wakati? No 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 no. Hauna family. family. Mhm. Asa mwana nikwambie. Now this is in my 20s. Una haraka. You're just about 25, 26 hapo. You are una haraka bado. Mm-hmm. So and no family and i was doing okay but ile kitu nilifanya unajua arrogance mm-hmm. ile unakunywa na wale watu wote ambao wanakupenda wakikuzingira kukuuliza mbona una mbona unakunywa wewe jibu yako ni ile ya arrogance kwa ile kunywa zako mm-hmm. and siku nitakuomba pombe usinipatie mm-hmm. so you 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 put aside eh? you isolate wale watu wote wanaokupe wale watu wote wanaokupenda and surround yourself na wale watu tu ambao mnakunywaga nao nipe maisha sasa hapo umeingia sasa, sasa katika ile nipe nata... sasa katika nataka maisha yako sasa pale yeah. umeingia katika ubugiaji wa pombe yani sasa umekuwa dysfunctional alcohol now to get to the dysfunctional alcoholic mm-hmm. When I go, okay when I go to the dysfunctional alcoholic ni story ndefu nayo hiyo hatuwezi cover hapo. Bana muda 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 kidogo niko na kama dakika kumi peke yake kumaliza story yako. Eh, so so naomba tuipeleke mbio mbio kidogo eh, tuimalize. Sasa but when I got into dysfunction mm-hmm. sasa ni ile story. Huwezi 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 fanya biashara. Ndio. Ukifanya biashara pesa yote ni kwenda kubugia. Mm-hmm. Utabugia mpaka ziishe zikisha hata heri uende ukope urudi kwa ba you th- your mind now functions on nothing other than alcohol okay kumbuka saa hizo you isolated everybody who loved you na ukaonyesha madharau na ukajitenga nao kabi mm-hmm. kabisa your life is beginning to fail mm-hmm. you have too much pride kurudi ku, kuomba msamaha kwa watu mm-hmm. so life just goes on na hayo maisha yakaenda yakiwa was and was mpaka mahali ilifika kwa kwamba sasa eh, by then nilikuwa nime, nime a long story but by then nilikuwa nimeenda kuishi tu lodging tuingine tu rais rais huko isili mm-hmm. ata hizo pesa za tunyumba zikakosa sasa umefika mahali unakunywa karubu mm-hmm. karubu ujue mtu yote anaojua pombe anajua karubu ndio ile takataka ya pombe kabisa mm-hmm. it is the scam of alcohol mm-hmm. uh, ukishafika hiyo hakuna kitu kingine bana is that, that is the end it is a drink so cheap hata muzi yangu ina vikombe ama glass mlauzi yangu anatuka suku utu tu mafuta mm-hmm. yeah. na hapo ndio sasa nikaa katika hizi ba unakutana na wasee wase wachafu wamebeba magunia kwa mgongo nini vitu kama hizo but even then i tell you this my friend even then i did not believe that kuna mtu ambaye nilikuwa nimewahi kuona chokora mm-hmm. lakini mimi sikuwa naamini kwa kwamba kuna mtu mm-hmm. yoyote ambaye akona akili timamu 
who can go live on the streets. Mm-hmm. I thought those people must be mad or something like that. Mm-hmm. Adult men or women living in the streets, they must be mad or something like that. Lakini ngoja ngwambie. Siku moja tukua tunakunywa hapo. Niko na 30 bob msea sha kama sha ni amba ah ye get house you buy ye kitu na mwambie boss niko na 30. Niko na 30 peke yake na ah tukujwe utalala kwangu. And uh, saa tukaa kunywa 11 o'clock at night imefika kwa karobo kumefungwa jamaa kana mbaya tueleke mhm toka hiyo bai kwa hiyo bai karobo iko na huko hizi litu sha panda na hapo first avenue ha, pale karibu na St Teresa's dispensary mm-hmm. ndio St Teresa's dispensary iko inajengwa kuna hardware iko hapo shafika hapo ana msee ile gunia kuna gunia alikuwa anabebaga kwa mgongo saa zote mm-hmm. sasa mimi nafikiriaga huyu msee pengine aishi madhari huko kiamotisia nini huto tu, tu tuvitongoji huko eh ndio lakini siku hiyo jamaa mi naona tunafika kwa hiyo varanda ya hardware akaweka gunia chini ashaanza kutoa na amekwambia utalala kwangu asha eh amekwambia utalala kwangu haya <laughs> <laughs> Asa msema ametoa gunia bana. Ashaanza <laughs> kutandika tandika tu carton. Na muuliza ni nini? Ehe. Akamwambia boss. Ana acha kushtuka tushafika base. Ehe. Akinakuambia pombe inashuka. Hapo hapo kwanza pombe inashuka. Mm-hmm. The reality that you are going to sleep on a street. Okay. Na ulikuwa umedharau watu ambao wanalala katika street. Na sio hata kudharau bali ni pale mimi sikuwa nawaelewa sio nilikuwa nafikiri ni chizi. Ukalala? Ni wazimu. Je, unalala? Unafanya nini? Una do? <laughs> okay. Usa tano usiku zishapita. Eh, si unaomba tu eh, vile tu jamaa analala anakupatia kagunia, unatia miguu ndani ka karatasi kabla kunafunika uso. And the surprising thing is eh kulalisha kichwa hivi kwa varanda. Ah, tukia, it's already 5:30. Na 5:30 ndio chokora ufukuzo kwa varanda. Mm-hmm. So 5:30 kuna eh hey, watchman washakuja tokeni hapa hapa siko mama zenu unajua chokora mm-hmm. watchman akupatiagi mahali pa kulala maana ati anakupenda. Mm-hmm. Umepewa mahali pa kulala because you are the first you are the alarm. Okay. Watchman anaya doze na pale kukija wezi mkanyago pale uh, then uh, you, you know you are the alarm. Eh? Mm-hmm. So 5:30 kabla wenye maduka comes lazima ufukuzo. Tukafukuzo. Mm-hmm kufukuzwa the first place na ujue shetani ujua kukamata wale wase washapotea the first place open the only place open at quarter to six ni baza karobo si utatoka kwa varanda wende kwa baza karobo so from there eh, kakaka nika 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 jifanya nimejikasidisha sana mbona naweza la varanda but sometime later i went back Another time later I went back. The same it, same veranda. The same same veranda. Mm-hmm. Na ikaenda hivyo mpaka dakika mwisho nikawa a full fledged streetman. Nikawa chokora. Na ku, unajua na uchokora inakuja uchafu. Unaanza kuli unaanza kuchafuka. Therefore hauwezi toka hapo uende ukafanye kibarua kingine. You you get into the street life you get into the street economy. Nikaonyeshwa how to get into the street economy nika eh, nikasaidiwa kununua gunia gunia eh, nikawa one man garbage collection company sasa unapiga mtaa huko unagonga gonga nyumba sana sana za wasomali au ndio tulikuwa tunafanyia garbage collection mm-hmm. kigonga gonga hii nyumba takataka shilingi tano mwingine atakataka shilingi kumi mwingine atakataka ya uh, whatever lakini ukijaza gunia uko na shilingi 50 shilingi 50 uko na shilingi 50 mhm Ukuwa na hiyo shilingi ya msini, kumbuka sasa venye umekuwa mchafu na this is one thing you may not know about street guys street guys especially men are denied even even the right of companionship and relationship to anybody else ukiwa na hamza yako you cannot go hang around pale watu wanasoma magazeti wewe ni chokora mm-hmm. Kwanza ukiwa mwanaume si kila mtu ujitenga na ye. Mm-hmm. so you can only go back to those who look like you smell like you to hang around with them unarudi pale kwa karubu shilingi 50 ilikuwa na budget ya, ya karubu shilingi 24 karubu ilikuwa ya shilingi nane mkebe tatu 24 bob umelewa sijui kama unajua sigara za rocket hizo ndio tulikana chapa zilikuwa 50 cents mm-hmm. uh, 12 24 hour supply hiyo ni shilingi sita that is 30 out of 50 Ah, uh, wajua sasa sasa hivi ndo la kupatia budget ile budget that's, that's the end, that's the budget of a day. Eh? 
Haya, na leo sasa 50 sio jamaliza unajua first priority is to alcohol. So but, yani ilikuwa target yako a day lazima upate 50 bob. Lazima Peki upate 50. Ukipata ukipata 50 bob kazi umefunga. Upata 50 bob kazi umefunga. Kukula sija kusikia ukiongea kusema nakula. Si ndio sasa nakwambia mm-hmm. ukiwa katika hiyo hali the first priority ni alcohol na ndio mm-hmm. nimekuanzisha na budget ya pombe. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> budget ya pombe 24 bob. Budget ya mafegi 6 bob. Sasa shilingi kumi hapo utatafuta tukaratasi tule tu green tule tulibaniwa na serikali tu to green paper bags. Eh? Mm-hmm. Uende na hiyo 10 bob uende nyuma utu tumikahawa tena huko isili kuna mikaa mingi Somali restaurants unaenda hapo nyuma. Unapeana karatasi na unapeana 10 bob. Kuna dustbin pale kwa kitchen wafanyikazi wanakuaga nayo. Mabakio yote yule alikuwa anakula gizeri yule alikuwa anakula sima yule alikuwa anakula mchele yule alikuwa pilau chapati whatever mabakio hayo yote kuna, kuna ile eh, bin wanazitupa <laughs> sasa hizo ndo nakuwekea for your ten bob hizo ndo nakuwekea sasa usi ulikuwa unaanza kuhusu chakula si basi unachukua hii paper bag yako unaenda unakaa pale kando unatoa maganda ya ndizi maganda ya ndimu kaa chupa imevunjikia kaa kuna stab ya fegi hapo ndani unama uko na cocktail eh asa hapo ndo hiyo ndo chakula yako na wewe if you, because you want to be an enter, you feel you are an enterprising person kile kinachobakia na wewe pia unaenda kuuzia mabakio hayo kwa chokora mwenzako yule hakuwa na nafasi ya kwenda kujitafutia ndio naye bado uongeze pesa za karibu kile kitu tutafanya my friend mm. your story is very interesting mm. you have a very interesting story by the way na napenda vile unavyo inaret yeah. na sitaki ni katia hata kidogo mm. nataka tuendelee na hii story yeah. u life yako life yako sa chokora the way you survived maana kwa wengi wajui vile machokora wanavyo survive by the way mm. the way you survived eh? na mpaka ukafikia sasa ile turning point i need to change eh? na ukabadilika kutoka unywaji na ukabadilika uka, ukatoka hapo and then you start writing books paka ukafungua center yako can i book you next week my friend we continue yes, you, the story yes you can it eh? was my fault for coming late and yes you can i would be happy because i would like to reach out to young men out there okay. because this thing inashika kila mtu me have given you my background so we have a deal yeah. next week on thursday next week we continue your story no problem no problem mama vp yeah ni story yake akielezea maisha yake katika city uchokora na kadhalika na kadhalika lakini hapo baadaye ni mtu alibadilika na hapo baadaye yuko paka na kitabu tutajua alibadilika namna gani turning point yake ilikuwa ni gani ni yeye mwenyewe aliamua kubadilika alibadilishwa na mtu na je ana familia ama ana familia alirejea nyumbani ubabini Westlands ama kurejea nyumbani ubabini Westlands next week papa hapa wakumbushe tena jina lako my brother Solomon Getao Kilanga Solomon Getao Kilanga atakuwa ndani ya eh, survivor siku hiyo next week kama vipi my brother tufanye hivyo eh <laughs>